President Obama's policies to tackle so-called Islamic State. I'm joined by Daniel Benjamin. He formerly served as coordinator for counterterrorism at the U.S. State Department. He's now at Dartmouth College. Um, before I get on to what President Obama was saying last night, I do have to ask you, Daniel, about uh, Donald Trump's statement, this idea that you can ban, should ban all Muslims coming into the United States. You've urged Americans not to panic in the light of the Paris attacks. Does this smack of panic to you? Well, I think Donald Trump, Ben Carson, Chris Christie, and the whole host of uh, Republican candidates are doing their absolute best to whip up a panic. And they view this panic as a good way to undercut the president and to turn the uh, election into a pure national security election because I don't think they have a very strong uh, economic case to make for themselves. It, this is absolutely panic. And as your correspondent said, it's demagoguery as it is when Donald Trump calls for killing all the families of terrorists or when Ben Carson talks about wearing, uh, putting, uh, you know, distinguishing clothing on, on Muslims. And this is such a diversion from the American tradition that it's, it's appalling. Uh I wanted to get your reaction to the shootings in San Bernardino and the president's speech, Daniel. Back in November, you wrote an, an article in the New York Times in which you said, we should be thankful for the paucity of American extremists given our superabundance of weapons. It was sort of prescient, unfortunately, what you wrote. Well, it's true, and I, I, I worry a great deal that the uh, panic that we just spoke about that is being whipped up is really actually going to drive uh, people into the arms of extremism because uh, they're doing a very good job at confirming uh, the jihadist narrative that uh, the United States and the West seeks to destroy uh, Islam. Uh, this is uh, as counterproductive as you could possibly imagine, and um, and it's very very worrisome. You know, I think that uh, people have lost fact, uh, lost uh, track of. The fact that since 9/11, uh, after 9/11, I think only 45 people have been killed in this country. Now, I don't mean to minimize what happened in San Bernardino. It's, it's a true tragedy. But 45 in jihadist violence, uh, that is actually not that bad a track record over nearly 15 years. And compared to losing 4,500 soldiers and 1,500 contractors in Iraq, which I think is something that the president has in mind. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a stark comparison. Should the president now step up more than he announced on Sunday night, his policies uh, for combating Islamic State? Well, I think even among uh, those who, uh, uh, who support the president's policies, there is a sense that they're not hugely emotionally satisfying and that one would like to see more momentum. Uh, there are things that can be done. Uh, there's discussion about uh, doing more to help uh, call in airstrikes by having uh, 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 soldiers, uh, U.S. forces embedded with uh, either Iraqi or Peshmerga forces. Uh, the, it's good news that this targeting unit is being moved to Iraq. It's good news that there are special operations forces going to Iraq, and maybe more should be done. Um, but, you know, um, there are lots of interesting signs uh, that, that aren't really negative, that, uh, you know, the uh, Islamic State has lost 25 percent of its territory. There was an interesting report out today that social media output has, has dropped dramatically from mm. uh, the Islamic State. You hear more uh, voices of dissent. So there are a lot of different things that are worth paying attention to here. Okay. Daniel Benjamin, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Well, in the